Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel where we are always talking about ways that you can enforce your purpose, maximizing you, what you do, and cultures around you. We are jumping into episode two, talking about the four cornerstones of strategic living with my good friend, Brian Holmes. So glad to have you here again. Well, thank you. I'm always honored. It's always a challenge, always empowering, always equipping. You and I have great conversations, mm -hmm. but I really, really love to just sit under your teachings. Thank you. So I really appreciate that they are very biblical, very spiritual, but also very relevant. Mm -hmm. They're I think practical. Some, yeah, I think sometimes, you know, we hear these like hooky mooky, and I, I mean, I just don't get them. Like, I don't have a clue what you're saying. <laughs> and I don't have any idea what this <laughs> means to me. That sounds like something in, you'd smoke. I yeah. don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to know, like, what does this mean to me today, you know? So yeah. I really love the relevance of your teachings. If this is your first time here, click that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell because this is only our second of five episodes walking you through personal healing personal discovery, personal development, and personal deployment. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave us a comment. I'm going to kick it right over to you to kind of start walking us through what is personal healing as a Well, before I dive into that, okay. I, I feel uh, a need to say this, and I mean this very sincerely, uh, since we're participating in the Mutual Admiration Club here. <laughs> uh, Lisa is, is one of the few people, and I mean this, I've been around this teaching thing, training thing, coaching thing, pastoring thing for many, many years, th over 30 years of my life. And uh, I I haven't met too many people that challenge me, and I mean that sincerely. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa has not only a, a tremendous grasp of the Word, the Bible, and the principles that really guide everything that we talk about, but also she has just this deep gift to be able to unpack it and to make it applicable and your writings, your books, your teachings, uh, you, so I, I really mean it when I tell you, you're, you're one of three or four or five people that I, in this season of my life, even have a desire to listen to. So, and, I, and that sounds, that sounds a little snotty, but yeah. I, I mean that. Uh, there, I just, I just can't lend my ear to too many people right now. Yeah. And I, I appreciate so much your mm -hmm. leadership in this area as well. So personal healing. Uh, we mentioned in the first session, if you missed that, you want to go back and just grab that. It's more of a high-level overview of the four cornerstones for strategic living. But let me just tell you what those are again so you can kind of have them on your radar. They are personal healing, personal discovery, personal development, personal deployment. And in that order, this is kind of how the journey flows. Uh, what I didn't mention in that first session is, is that seasonally, when one comes upon transition and comes upon moving from one season to another season, whatever the case may be, it's very common to find yourself going back and yeah. revisiting these areas again mm -hmm. and again and again. Personal development, for example, never really stops. It just It's an ongoing process sure. throughout life. But sometimes you have to go back and take another inventory of your personal capacities, mm -hmm. your personality, to understand you a little bit better. Because life does have a tendency to, to morph us, change us, or or shall I say, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we can go back into the discovery process and find things that have crept into our pure DNA that don't belong there. And we've got to kind of weed mm -hmm. those out based on the identity God's given us. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that uh, you can live through this cyclically. It's not just a one and done kind of a deal. But generally speaking, it's a framework. Mm -hmm. So personal healing. I, I listed personal healing uh, number one on this list because I, it's hard for me to see anyone truly discovering with pure eyes who they are in the discovery process without having offloaded the filters, the junk, the, the unbelief, the, the poor beliefs, the, the limiting beliefs that we pick up along the way. Mm -hmm. I've not met anybody, Lisa, I don't think in my lifetime, not anybody, no matter how much respect and awe I felt about the person who did not have at their core issues that needed to experience personal healing. Mm -hmm. So I, I really believe this one applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. I genuinely do. Uh, the, the Bible tells us that we will prosper and we will be in health. That, that applies to all those areas we talked about in the last session mm -hmm. of our life. Okay. And we will experience vitality and significance fulfillment proportionate to the condition of our soul, that, yeah, that inner good. part of us, the emotions, the, the will, the mind. Uh, and so 
Another way of saying that is I'm going to prosper and I'm going to know wellness to the degree that my soul or my internal governor prospers. So the soul is, is the governor, and I don't mean like elected leadership. I'm talking about it, it governs the direction, mm-hmm. the, the trajectory, the speed at which your life is moving in the direction that God planned it. And so there are so many examples of talented and gifted people that have have really done well in life. Their talent, their gift, their capacity opened doors for them, took them places, even into significant wealth and influence. And yet, how many stories have we seen in politics, in, in the sports arena, in, the, in Hollywood, where as successful as someone might be, at some point their life completely implodes? Why? Mm-hmm. How could this even be? People with that status and that stature, how could their life just completely fall apart? Mm-hmm. It's because... Uh, your gift will make room for you, but your gift is not going to keep you there. <laughs> there. There's a weightiness. There's a responsibility. There's a. There, you're, it's like building this massive structure of a building on top of a, a lumber foundation instead of mm-hmm. concrete and mm-hmm. piers and pylons and all this stuff. Uh, it's not going to sustain you. The, the, the brokenness, the, the, the fissures, the, the structural uh, anomalies that you've left covered up, so to speak. Those things at some point are going to begin to give way. And what you've built on top of the brokenness is going to actually, everybody's going to see it. And so that's why I really, really encourage people to, to explore this healing piece. Uh, my emotional, my mental, my spiritual condition becomes essentially the ceiling for my rising as I'm growing and, and doing really better and, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, finding more success and more significance, more influence. At some point, there's a ceiling here that's going to limit me moving beyond it. And it's not just a ceiling that it becomes. It becomes almost the the springboard that sends me back in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be aware of this. That's good. So these unresolved, unreconciled issues are going to show up. Mm -hmm. And they're going to show up over and over and over again. All right? I'm thinking about... um I see them first or second Samuel, I believe, where Achan, Achan sin, where yes. there's the entire nation is going in and they're they're fighting and it's in it's in Joshua and they're going in and they're trying to take over the land mm-hmm. and he says take for yourself God says take for yourself nothing take no undefiled nothing. thing and Achan takes one small thing and the Bible says that he hid it under the floor of his tent yeah. Yeah. And that one small thing seems so insignificant, but it actually cost them the victory. Cost them everything. And and so I, I, I often view, sometimes we think, you know, the wound from our past or the, the fear of my father or whatever it is, it seems so insignificant or we've learned to manage, manage it, meaning mm-hmm. I've learned to hide it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's still there tucked under the floor of the tent. Yep. And I think those are the things that we really need to say, okay, God, look under the tent. Look, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> and so uh, as you were saying that, I felt like the Lord was really kind of connecting that with Achan and how detrimental it was to the nation's victory, which is really where we're going in talking about your personal healing taking you to a place of being the influencer that no we're doubt, called to be. No doubt. Uh, I'm working with a client right now, uh, and this person is just so intelligent, mm-hmm. uh, has everything going for them, has a great deal of influence in a lot of important places, and uh, seems to be on a trajectory that's that if somebody looking in just on the surface it's like man this person's got their stuff together yeah right Mm -hmm. uh and dealing with them and helping them with their business stuff Mm -hmm. inevitably we we find that oops we pulled the cover back a little bit there and we might want to deal with that looking under the floor of the tent looking under the floor (laughs) of the tent and uh in the last few times we've met uh for the first time in this person's life there was a, a level of i guess grace and trust to where they could say, these are things I've never told anybody. Mm-hmm. And and these are what I, this is what I'm dealing with. And this is how it manifests in my life. And I'm telling you, it's a train wreck underneath that deal. Yeah. And by that I'm saying, I'm, there's no condemnation in saying right. that. I'm not throwing any stones. I'm simply saying we, we work so hard. It takes so much energy, emotion, mental uh, capacity, spiritual capacity. It takes everything in us to s- try to sustain the... The mirage. Yes. We we yes. project because 
deep within us, we believe that we can be successful and we can do things, we can have great influence. We, we know that there's goodness in us, so we're, we're, we're always projecting that image. But down here, there's something going on that's constantly, that, that was my story. Shoot, Lisa, I was traveling all over the dang world. I mean, quite literally. And in the meetings we were doing in churches and in, in tents and stadiums, I was seeing people raised from the dead, blind eyes open, all kinds of stuff. And in the moment, there, there was the grace of God and the anointing of God to, to function in that gift and to do those things. Sure. I would step off of the, the platform, however, go back to my hotel room or wherever I was staying, and it was like, such a contrast because I would go back into deep depression, self-hatred, so much pain. I mean, I, it, but for the grace of God, I would not have survived that season physically, quite honestly, because it was torment. But so many great leaders, so many great people who, who God has raised up for certain purposes in the marketplace or wherever it may be, they have such potential, but they're always going three steps forward and five steps back because it's simply that they haven't mm-hmm. dealt with the unresolved stuff. Mm-hmm. So my supposition is that if we are willing to to pull the curtain back and to go underneath the, the tent floor and to to bring some things into the open, I am my contention is is that we will actually release ourselves into our full potential. Mm-hmm. Will it be painful to deal with those things? Uh, yeah. It will. I can tell you it will. There, there's, there, we, we've avoided the pain for 20 years, 30 years, some of us, right? And so that stuff has had time to fester, to build up, to grow cancerous within our, our hearts, and, and we're, we're doing all this. But, but to root that out, to bring it into the light, there's an interesting scripture that says that when we confess our sins one to another, then we're healed. It, yeah. it sounds so, so benign, right? But think about that. There's something about saying out loud, this is what I've got going yeah. on. This is where my life is jacked up. This is what happened to me. Bringing something out of the darkness into the light so good. fully releases God to heal you. Yeah. And so all we're doing in this personal healing area here is encouraging you to say, okay, God, I don't want to be limited by things from my past that I've been unwilling to deal with. I want to deal with them. I want to reconcile them. I want to get them mm-hmm. done so that I can move beyond them completely whole. Mm-hmm. That's the deal. Now, Lisa, I want to ask you a question. I'm going to flip the script on you here. Are you going to walk me through some personal healing? Life? I think I probably will, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a, I'm down, I'm down. It's going to be a case study on the air here. <laughs> no, here, here's my thing. You, you do a lot of counseling. You've done a lot of uh, work in the area of personal healing with other mm-hmm. people, as have I over the got many, many years. I, 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 can, I, I can hear people saying, well, I, don't really, I can't think of anything major that happened to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, or there's probably some watching this and think, yeah, there's stuff that happened to me, but I don't really want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. What are some of the, the areas that you have seen that have significantly weighed people down, held them back, and limited them from moving in the direction that God had for them? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the first one that comes to my mind is father issues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. always a big one, right? Uh, what, what other ones have you, have you seen? Well, yeah, father issues would definitely be the number one thing that would jump into my mind. Um, and... And for me, I think it's more, and I know I might be jumping ahead of you, but it's more about the message of circumstances. So any kind of circumstance that you had that sent a message um, that was less than who God had called you to be, right? So we're left with that message. Um, So uh, experiences, we talk about your system plus your experience equals your BS often, (laughs) which is your belief system, Mm -hmm. which is often BS. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, I think father issues, um, relationships, any kind mm-hmm. of broken relationship where you had some kind of, um, whether it was verbal abuse, uh, people who had experienced incest, rape, yep. sexual issues, those kinds of things uh, will definitely hold you back. And, th- and those are the obvious things, but I think, you know, go- obviously going through divorce, those kinds of things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, will hold you back. I think uh, a lot of times, um, you know, going back to that root of fear. Yeah. And really recognizing, like, I fear and don't see the value of who I am unless I am who I'm supposed to be, whatever that, whatever mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that relationship the arbitrary calls, thing. Yes, yes, yes. The ideal, what the world mm-hmm. tells us is the ideal. And so for, for me, I think those are the biggest things that usually end up going back. But father issues is the most, definitely the most prominent. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think if I've thought of all of them. And relational issues, for mm-hmm. sure relational issues, which again is is father issues. Uh, sometimes, obviously, mom would come in there as well as part mm-hmm. of your system sure, growing sure. up. 
Um, I also think that there's a lot of wounds because of religion. Um, no. We, <laughs> I did say that. You're kidding loud. me. You know, just uh, <laughs> just the 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 oppression that mm-hmm, religion mm-hmm. brings, and again, the fear, the fear base that it's 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 rooted in fear. Mm-hmm. So much of it. One of the things that I've seen a lot of is uh, perceived abandonment. It could be literal abandonment, but also perceived mm-hmm. abandonment. And then another big one that that oftentimes goes back to the father piece is uh, the absence of words of affirmation mm. or the presence of words of labeling or or uh, criti- criticism mm-hmm. or those types of things. I, I've got a, a very good friend of mine, uh, one of my best friends in the world, actually. Um, I say that we haven't seen each other in quite a long time, but but uh, his story was pretty interesting. You know, he was just a very musical kid, very happy kid. Uh, I mean, as straight as an arrow, but just just a happy kid. And one day, uh, he had there was some company over at their house, and they were in the living room, and he just, you know, nonchalantly came skipping through the living room and out the back door to go play. And th- as he's going through, in front of these these friends of the parents, the dad yells at this kid, and, and please forgive me for using this pejorative here, but, you know, he, he said, you know, stop skipping through this house like a faggot. And just threw out this very harsh labeling word. And so in that moment, a father's words attached themselves to this kid. Mm. And from that time, the kid felt like something was wrong with him. Yeah. And from that time, the kid began grappling with his sexuality because he had just been labeled something that he had an association with. And so it became a thing Yeah. because of words that were spoken. Spoke it into existence. I mean, I'm telling you, th- there's a lot of that kind of thing. And then another thing that I see a lot with adult men is where somewhere in their life, be it as a, a, a ball player in high school or an early relationship or an early business venture mm-hmm. or something, but they have some massive failure. They experience just, I mean, yeah, they, the whole thing falls mm-hmm. apart. And something in them believes, I can't risk anymore. I can't try anymore. I've got to just, mm-hmm. I've got to plateau this whole thing mm-hmm. because I don't dare go beyond this threshold because if I do, I will certainly fail. Mm-hmm. And I see that a lot with a lot of grown men. So there's there's just so many areas that we, we can see it's that this affects because I, I do I think think that a stronghold for men is a lot of self failure. Mm-hmm. Um, but for women, a lot of times it's fear of failing a man. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And so and so I, I wrestle sometimes with what have we done with the you know uh, the submission headship all that stuff taking it to the degree where oh, yeah. women then only live to please. We think about like uh, Leah and Rachel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, where Rachel or Leah kept getting pregnant and saying, well, now my husband will love me. Well, yeah, now yeah, my yeah. husband will love me. Yeah, 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 every, yeah. every, and so finally he's like, oh, oh she, never she, she, finally she's like, okay, well, this time I'm just going to praise God yeah, because yeah. I can't, no matter how many kids I give him, he still doesn't love me. And we, we learn from that really just, again, the female desire really to and, and I mean I think that's part of what the curse is saying where he says you will have a desire for your husband but he will rule over you mm. and that we will live in this constant state of trying to please man and so when I work with men it is often just self failure they're they're afraid to take that risk they're afraid to fail but for women it's more they're afraid to fail people mm. typically a male in their life whether it's their father or their husband wow well, let's just talk about a few of the big things, okay? <laughs> Throw that out there. <laughs> no, that's that's brilliant stuff. Um, you know, you mentioned sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. You mentioned rape. You mentioned uh, emotional abuse or verbal abuse. Uh, these are things that I see, oh my gosh, it's almost an epidemic, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in all the years that I pastored and traveled around the world preaching, teaching in churches, uh, I, I would, I've seen statistics by various groups that say up to 70% of people who consider themselves Christian have experienced some form of sexual abuse, 70%. That, that's enormous. I, quite honestly, I, I would say that's probably accurate because in, in mm-hmm. the seminars that I've done, the healing workshops yeah. that I've done, I've seen that borne out so many times. So that's a big deal. And, and it's one of those things that it's interesting that people tend, tend to not remember what happened to them. It, it, the human brain is so powerful, Lisa. It's like the human brain has the capacity to actually allow you to forget something that, that you remember. It's just, stay with me here. Meaning the memory is there, 
but it is so buried, so suppressed, so covered up, and so mm -hmm. compartmentalized mm -hmm. that your conscious mind really can't recall it. I was with somebody one time. This is this is a crazy story. But I, I my, my son was in scouting from the time he was five years old all the way through to Eagle Scout. And we were in Cub Scout still. And we did an outing or a field trip uh, as a group out to a printing press. It was a where they printed magazines and mm -hmm. newspaper ads and newspapers and different things. And one of our leaders was a lady. One of our leaders, when we arrived uh, at the location, uh, I could tell she was nervous and I, I couldn't figure out what the deal was. But as we walked from the parking lot through the front door of the building into the printing shop, uh, this lady like manifest in a way that I've never seen before in my life. She literally fell to the floor. I thought she was having a seizure curled up in a ball, like in a fetal position, and began screaming as though someone was actually molesting her right there on the spot. Hmm. It freaked these little kids out. Sure. And so me and another lady, uh, lead, leader, we literally picked her up and carried her outside. Some of the other leaders took the kids in for the tour. And out there, we worked with her. She was literally vomiting. She, she just, I'm telling you, everything in her came unhinged. After we got her calmed down and kind of got her sorted out to the point where she could talk, she said, I've never told anybody this, but my dad and my mom owned a printing shop growing up, and I, I was there every day of my life. And she says, from the time I was 11 years old till I was 17 years old, my dad molested me time and time again, and every time in the printing shop. The smell mm. of the chemicals and the ink and the whatever the paper fabric when she walked in, the smell mm -hmm. brought all of that rushing back to her when she literally had not thought about it for 20 years. Mm -mm. So there, there's there's so many things that we can talk about that are just super extreme like that, down to very minor things that we just kind of carry around like, well, this is my cross to bear. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you don't have a cross to bear. <laughs> just Jesus' cross. Yep. And he bore it all. He already bore it and so my, my point is, is that Personal healing is available to you, and it's worth going after these things that are unreconciled, unresolved. It could be bitterness you hold against someone. It could be unforgiveness you hold towards someone. Whatever it is, there's no point in carrying it forward because forward means to a certain point for you, and that's where you stop every time. If you want to grow, to expand, and to experience life at its fullest, personal healing is a cornerstone you need to pay some attention to and spend some time on for sure. Mm -hmm. Can I can I give you seven steps? Let's do it. Okay, so you know I, I've got if all I these. If I flop on the floor, don't mind me. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got all these lists, right? Uh, you know, I again seven steps. There's, there's there could be three steps. A hundred. The, the one step I can tell you that works every time is just run to Dad, and by, by that I mean run to the Heavenly Father. He's he's very faithful. He's never going to turn you away. Uh, but the first thing you can do to really begin laying the, the groundwork for this personal healing piece is you have to acknowledge it. Uh, I'm reminded that, you know, the only authority Satan has is to rule in areas of darkness. So theoretically, if I keep something hidden in darkness, I'm, I'm giving Satan the right, the authority, and the power to rule that area of my life. Mm -hmm. The moment I find somebody that I can trust, like a Lisa, like a Brian, like a, a pastor, if that's, if that's the relationship you have with a pastor, or even a very close friend where I sit there now and say, listen, I've got something I need to get out of the dark and put it, put it on the table. And this, is, this happened to me. This is what I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. Just you saying it, bringing it out of the darkness and putting it into the light, it just opens up the whole thing. There's so much freedom in that. There's so much freedom. So, you, you know, Dr. Phil McGraw once said, you cannot change what you're not willing to acknowledge. And that is true. There is nothing that's going to happen for you that's transformative until you're willing to own it, to acknowledge it, to put it on the table. Mm -hmm. All right, that's number that's one. Number two, which goes along with that, is to confess it. If there's something in you that's failed, say it. I'm th This is broken in me. I struggle with this. Uh, I have this problem. Now, usually the, the struggles we have are a result of a pain we've experienced, so it all ties together, you see. But to, to, to confess and put it out there, this is, this is what's going on in me. I wouldn't say this is who I am because that's not who you are. But this is what's going on in me. This is what I'm struggling with. This is the pain I've experienced to just put it all out there to where it's forever in the open. Mm -hmm. Three, resolve. And by that I mean 
you must come to the resolve. You must come to this willingness to deal with it. No matter how bad it hurts, no matter how, how rough it gets, you must deal with it. Deal with the pain of the root of that issue. Number five, number, <laughs> number <four>. five, <laughs> number four. <laughs> you have, if there's other people involved that have wounded you, hurt you, or have implicated themselves by being a part of whatever has brought you pain, you must forgive them. You must release them. That's a choice you have to make. Uh, unforgiveness is not hurting them, it's hurting you. That's it. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Okay, we can go deeper into that. I think we can also throw in there the the times and the moments where you have to forgive and release yourself. Oh, absolutely. You know. You jumped ahead of me, but I'm yes. Sorry. No, no, please. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> uh, I mean. I'm walking I, myself through a particular situation. Like, who would I have to forgive in this? And I was like, oh, myself. Oh, myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's really a, remarkable you said that because it, it's, it's amazing to me how much pain people inflict on themselves because they're beating themselves over the head. They're, they're holding themselves hostage to something, a previous failure, an addiction, whatever it is. Forgive yourself. Release yourself. Let yourself off the hook, right? Number five, this comes from my strong Christian faith and belief in God and His grace and His mercy toward us, but there, there's something powerful when I turn that confession, that acknowledgement, that willingness to release other people toward the Lord and say, now, God, I need you to do what I can't do. It's praying. It's asking the Father to meet mm-hmm. you in that moment and give you the power to pass through that place it's where good. you've always been stuck. It's good. Right? It, it's, it's, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. It's like, I've done what I can do, what I know to do. Now there's this peace that, that only you can do. Mm-hmm. It's just, good. it's that humility of saying, I need you to heal this part mm-hmm. of me, right? Mm-hmm. And then once God begins to release that, and he will, the sixth part is to receive. Now listen, if I if I come in here and want to hand you a thousand bucks. I'm going to receive it. I know you'll receive it. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> the, the point is, though, is that God has given us such a gift in this, this promise of wholeness and yeah, healing and fullness. And yet so many people reject it because they're they're more afraid of the pain associated with dealing with the process than they are in recognizing the value of the gift. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing to me. Mm-hmm. And so you have to say, God, whatever you have for me, I want it. I want all of it. I receive it. Mm-hmm. I receive healing. I receive forgiveness. I receive restoration. Lord, all this crap that got stolen from me as a kid, in my case, I, I'm, I'm receiving back into my life it's everything good. that I lost. Restore. I mean, you just say it out loud. I mean, you just, you just like become the open container and just let God fill mm-hmm. you up mm-hmm. because there's so much He wants to give you. And then I, I love ahead. that you brought that up because I, I think uh, receiving is such, such an important piece. And I think so many times God lays out in front of us our healing. But if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of people that I deal with, they're addicted to their dysfunction. Oh, oh my gosh, um, yes. And, and there's a fear there in saying, well, if I let go of this this mentality, this part of me, I don't know who I am anymore. The, yes, they, they've become accustomed to seeing themselves yes. as that person. Yeah. And to re, to relinquish that identity is, yeah. to, is to be in limbo, basically. Yeah, well, it, it, like to put it practically, just to put an example, like if I let go of this failure mentality, then I have to embrace that I'm a success. And I, and I had to walk through that years yeah. ago where I was like, oh, I fear failure, I feel failure. When I really started thinking about it, I was like, actually, I fear success. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and because I feel like once you get to that standard of success, then, and this is, of course, God has worked me through all this, then I have to maintain that level, right? And Lord was like, no, 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 no. I'm not asking you to build it. Because if you build it, you do have to sustain mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you to let me build it, and I will sustain it. There you go. But it's, it's that p- particular, just as an example, like if I let go of failure, that means I have to embrace you know, success, mm-hmm. and I fear success more than I fear. And so sometimes we fear who we could be, who we should be, who we want to be more than we fear yeah. the yeah. sickness or the affliction, and therefore yeah. when we hold on to it. Well, and it's easier, quite frankly, to maintain the status quo than it is to embrace it's something good. you've not walked out before. Mm-hmm. So essentially, you're, you know, it's, it's like that song from Frozen, Into the Unknown. I'm, I'm laying down what I know and know really well, but it's not doing it for me. It's hurting me. It's it's costing me. But I'm laying that down, and I have no clue what the mm-hmm. the freedom thing even looks like. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather hang on to what I know than than yeah. to be empty-handed for a minute and trust God with this thing. Yeah, it's good. It's a, it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. To wrap this up, uh, here here's what I want to say. The, the seventh thing, by the way, is to just live it out and become the fullness of what God yeah. had intended you to be. 
you got to go do the deal. That's where that strategic living piece comes into it. Now I got to go, who am I? Why am I here? Development, discovery, all these things, and, and get after it. But it begins with personal healing. It begins right here. So my challenge to you today is simply this: as we close out, if if you're not, if if you're if you have an awareness that you're not living the life that you believe God really has for you, if you're not satisfied, if you're if you're not content, if you're not fulfilled, then that's that's some evidence that God has more for you. And I would suggest to you that you you probably want to go through the the neighborhood of personal healing in order to reach that next step. It's a, it's worth it. You said, I'm afraid of the pain I'm going to feel. You'll feel the pain for a minute, but then you'll be done with it. Right now, you're carrying it around with you stuffed away, and it's, mm-hmm. it's eating you from the inside. Get it in the open, deal with it, reconcile it, and then you're done with it for life. Good. Isn't that an awesome prospect? It's good. It's good. It's kind of like cleaning out a closet. Yeah. You know, i got to pull everything out, and everything gets a lot messier oh, before horrible. it gets better. Oh, yeah. Um, but if I want to clean out my closet... I have to go through that process. Absolutely. That's a great analogy. Awesome. Okay, so next episode, we're going to be talking about personal discovery. Oh, yeah. uh, Which is his jam. No, personal development is your jam. They're all my jam. (laughs) I I, I like toast and jam. All right. Let us know if you have enjoyed this. Let us know if you are in need of some personal hearing. If you like this, like really plucked something, plucked a nerve. What is the best way to get a hold of you? You know, brianholmes.com is my website, and uh, for for many years we did lots of podcasts and blog posts and things like that, and I've been a little bit uh, unplugged from that for a while, but all I have over 350 or maybe almost 400 episodes, podcast episodes, videos, things yeah. available on the website, and it's just great stuff. And I have subscribed to your podcast. See, I know. And, uh, and then, of course, you can always email us and contact us through the website as well. Awesome. You know how to find me. My link is all over the place in here. We'll put Brian's <laughs> link as well. But from now until next time, remember, enforcing purpose. It starts with you.